Welcome back to the Swing Factory Golf Show. I'm Justin Masinko here with Don Peterson. How you doing, Don? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. So I figured we'd do the putting episode today, huh? Yeah, um, I, I think there's uh, plenty of interest out there um, in yeah. putting. So it's one way to get your scores lower. So I guess there's a lot of interest. Um, yeah. So the way we can kind of structure this episode is we each thought of four of our most four or five. What are we doing? I came up with five. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so, think of one on the fly. But there uh, you go. All right. But uh, we'll go back and forth talking about the most common faults we see in in people that. Yeah, you know, we watch putt. So sure, I, I'd say uh, I'll, I'll kick it off, and uh, I, I'd say probably the number one thing that I see with beginning students, not you know, right. we we'll break it down maybe because I think there's other faults that I see in people that have played longer, right, or, or more play more often. But uh, beginning students, it's movement of the body. Um, right. They have a tendency to move all over. There, yeah. there. Uh, it's almost like they have weight transfer in their putting stroke. Right, right. And and sometimes they they think they're moving their arms or they think they're moving their shoulders, but they're moving everything. It's mm -hmm. like their hips are moving, the weight's transferring, and uh, if you have movement in your body, then obviously you're adding. You know, most putting strokes or or very few, I should say, are where the putter face stays square going back square to the target line. Most, most people have some sort of opening and closing. Right. Okay. And we've even determined that on tour, there's a little bit of opening and closing of the face. There's some arcing in the path. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you do that and then you add movement of the body, now you've got a, a real extreme case for error. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the face is going to be open or closed and impact more than, than it should be. Right. And, and that's going to send the ball offline. So how, how do you normally go about fixing that? Yeah, you know, for beginners, what I do is I, I just have them stand up against a wall. You know, right. have, them, have them put their tailbone, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cheeks, or buttocks up right. against a, a wall and try to take a normal putting stance. I don't want you leaning on the wall, but you just uh, step back there, and then I say, okay, if you feel yourself moving, you feel your tailbone moving on the wall, then stop. Don't, right. don't let that move. And when that happens, then I try to get people to, you know, rock from, you know, the, in between their shoulder blades, mm -hmm. try to eliminate, you know, moving parts. Yeah, it's amazing what having that physical feedback like a wall will do. Right. You know, it just gives you that body awareness that, that people need. And especially with the putting stroke, it's so small that the changes can be made relatively quickly. So, right. Yeah, that's a... Right, and, and that's and that's fairly simple. And like I said, that's mostly beginners. Anybody who's played a lot of golf, you still see people that move a little bit. Right. But I don't know that it's uh, it's the number one problem they, that I they, see with, they, with golfers who are you know fifteen, yeah, eighteen, they ten kind, handicap. They kind of fix it on their own. Yeah, it, it, somewhere along the line, they recognize right. being still is important. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I'll start with my first one. I feel like with too many people, a very common problem is they take too long of a putting stroke. Now, a, flu a long fluid putting stroke can be good at times, but I feel like for the higher handicappers and the average golfer, especially with putts inside 10 feet, they tend to take the club face back too far. And that, what, that kind of causes two things. One, it, it brings the putter head off the ground a little too much, where we know that keeping the putter head low to the ground and nice and steady could lead to more consistent contact and have a better strike on it in a better roll. And then the other thing is I've seen a lot of people will take the club face way too far back and then kind of be forced to decelerate through the ball right? and, and, and right. miss the putt. Yeah, so, try, so, trying to determine how far. Are so if, 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 you, if you tell someone, you know, hey, shorten your putting stroke, they're, they're almost forced to accelerate through the ball, which is good which is what we want. So, and it's something I've found in my own putting stroke. If I'm in a pressure putt situation, or, you know, especially inside 10 feet or so, I'll, I'll think to myself, shorten it up. That way I know the putter head's going to be back on a good line. It's going to be close to the ground, and I'm going to accelerate through the ball. Right, right. Yeah, so, and that, that's a real common one that, that I've seen in a lot of people. Right. Um, I, I would say so, too. Um, yeah. I'd say I'm looking at my list here. Uh, the next most common thing I see, I guess, would be setting up open with open shoulders. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if you stand behind someone, and sometimes it can be closed feet. You know, sometimes people don't know how to line up what I would call parallel to their 
to the target line with their feet or you know I would prefer to see someone open with square shoulders than I would see someone who's got closed feet and open shoulders mm -hmm. so I think open shoulders can cause a lot of problems and just like a, a full swing if you have the ball in the proper position and your shoulders are open if there is any opening or closing of the club face going back and forth then you're promoting the face to come through open just like you would be in a in a in a golf swing if you if you have open shoulders in your golf swing and uh, it's going to promote an outside in swing path mm -hmm. and an outside in swing path if you allow the club face to swing centrifugally through the ball or yeah. you know centripetally as a lot of people would say but if you <laughs> allow the club face to swing itself through the golf ball without you trying to manipulate it what happens is it won't close until it gets to the bottom of the swing arc right. and if you have if you have or won't close naturally until it gets to the bottom of the swing arc. Yeah, so, so if you have an outside in swing path and the ball position is in, um, uh, in the wrong position, I guess, then mm -hmm. the face will not square and you'll, you'll push putts or you'll right. leave putts off to the right. right. So consequently, you hear some of the top players on tour, they talk about releasing the club, releasing the club. Mm -hmm. And I've got videos I'd, I'd love to talk in depth about that but that's another uh, half hour show <laughs> at least um but i i, th I think that the the best players on the tour let the club face release somewhat naturally or i call it centrifugally and i know the proper right. terminology is probably centripetal because the the, the, the face flies over itself at, at impact yeah. in a good golf swing and then it gets technical yeah. and then, then it get, yeah you get real yeah, technical but, but, uh, but i think open shoulders is yeah. a big problem yeah I, I think it's cool you said that i feel like what com or what ha what causes that position uh really often is when people are righty and right eye dominant uh-huh so to see the hole better, they kind of turn their head a little bit more, maybe open their shoulders a little bit more. And, yeah, that's uh, interesting. So I was figured, and that's actually, I've always had a pretty decent putting stroke and a pretty decent, uh, you know, setup. And I think part of the reason being is I could see the hole very well because I'm a lefty and right eye dominant. So right. that's my front eye. And, yeah. You know, little thing that helps. Right. You know, little thing to note. Um, yeah, so we'll go on to my next one. Uh, this is kind of an interesting thing because a lot of players do it correctly. The people you watch on TV do it. They do it correctly. But I feel like when most amateurs use the forward press, it's, it tends to be a problem. And most of the time when I'm looking at a putting stroke and they're doing the forward press, I would advise them not to do a forward press. Um, yeah. Obviously, we see the best putters in the world like Phil Mickelson and, and Jordan Spieth who use the forward press correctly. But they're able, just through a crazy amounts of repetition they've done, and you know, they're able to keep the club face pretty square when they forward press it. And I think Phil has talked about it in a book he wrote that it's kind of his trigger movement. Like everybody has right. a trigger movement, and the trigger movements that press the hands. So that's why a lot of people say they do it, and then that, and then they want the hands in front of the club face when they go through the ball. Um, reason I don't like it is any time you're starting dynamically like that, you're you're adding more variables to the stroke. So that's, that's what I would, I would agree with you there. And the, the thing I don't like about it is it's it's a small kind of like a small muscular movement maybe almost right. like a twitch type of and if you get under pressure and you maybe give it a little bit more forward press than normal right. or you get a little quicker with it or i don't know it just seems it, like it would be a it, to, to me it seems like it could be a, an inaccurate way to do things it, or adding an extra movement that doesn't need to be there and it's funny when uh you know almost every time i see someone do that people push a lot of putts and yeah. what, what happens is, if you press the hands, the face will open a, yeah. little, a little bit slightly. There's potential for that, And, yeah. and uh, you know, I've seen people close it when they, they do it as well. But I feel like most often, when they press the hands too much, the club face will open. And there, there's other things. If, if you do it too much, the ball will bounce a little too much. And uh, I just don't think it's a very smart thing to do. Right. Um, if, if you do it successfully, like Jordan Spieth and... and 
Phil Mickelson, great, but uh, yep. <laughs> I just... Both of those guys get off from time to time, though, and who knows? Maybe that's right. something that can be a problem and, for and them. And I, I actually understand the trigger movement, how that can help. Sure. And, and, it helps uh, in full swing, for sure. Right. And I would just suggest finding a different trigger movement. There you Personally, go. what I do is I, I look at the hole twice, then I go. Yeah. So I, you know, look at the ball, look at the hole, look at the ball, look at the hole, then I go. Right. So... Yeah, that that's another thing. I I'm sure there's there's other trigger movements. Right. I've heard of people kind of uh, changing grip pressure right before, you know, stuff like that. I don't that those are better trigger movements than actually dynamically moving your hands and right. moving the club face. So. I'd say my my next one is uh, I call I call it a two axis rather than a fixed axis, and and what I mean by that is when I putt I putt around the vertebrae in the middle of my shoulder blade, so to me that's one joint, so it's almost like a fixed axis. So when I rock my shoulders, I'm moving around a fixed axis back here. Right. And what I see with amateurs and people who putt poorly most of the time, I've seen some great wristy putters that that go from and when you're kind of wristy and you're moving your wrists mm -hmm. like this and those of you who are listening to the podcast you can't see me but <laughs> but if you're moving from two joints the left wrist and the right wrist then now you've got two groups of muscles you have muscles in your left forearm muscles in your right forearm to me that's a little bit more uh, moving parts and more inaccurate right i'd rather move big muscles around the vertebrae in the middle of my back and when you watch me putt i've kind of freeze my elbows i freeze my shoulder joints, and a lot of people, you know, you hear people talk about, oh, he's a shoulder. You know, when you putt, you want to putt with your shoulders, right? Yeah, right. Well, actually, I, I, I tell people to putt with their back. I don't want you yeah. using the your arm joints. You don't putt from your shoulder joint. Um, almost, your shoulders are moving in relation to the middle of your back. Almost pivot around your spine. That's right. Yeah. So that's the way I've trained myself to putt. If you look at Zach Johnson, um, you know, arguably one of the better putters maybe in the history of the game. Right. And it, it's kind of funny because I've always looked at him because his head moves. His head moves because he's moving around the center of his pivot point, which is the center of his shoulder blades. And his head is not his center. Yeah. And, and I've always related to him because mine is the same way. I know my eyes and my head move back and forth when I putt slightly. But it doesn't matter because that's not my center point. My center point's the middle of my back. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so I, I try to get people to learn to putt from one. It's like a fixed axis. And that's why they eliminated the fixed axis with the putting right. <laughs> is because it's more accurate. Yeah. So if you can learn to putt around the, your, the vertebrae that are right in between your shoulders... Um, I think, and, and then I tell people to slump with their spine because I think that gives you um, hands right below your, your, your shoulders, right below those vertebrae. Mm -hmm. And it kind of it can make a perfect putting stroke. I mean, yeah. if you look at it, it's, it's almost like a perfect way to putt. Right. It's almost like you can't do anything wrong from there. Yeah. And then you got to line it up and, and choose the right speed. Uh, obviously. But as far as making a perfect stroke, I mean, it, it's almost possible with a human being. Right. So. Yeah. The you know, people forget the, the stroke, unlike the full swing. Yeah. Putting stroke's so small, it it probably is possible to make the putt perfect. Well, I, I've always, and that, that I mean, was my mental outlook, and I'll go over that. Because I was, I always consider myself, I mean, I've played golf a long time, and I've had times when I didn't play very often, and my putting stroke got off, and I didn't feel like I was putting very well. But when I putted and I played and I practiced a lot, I always felt like I was the best putter on the planet. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't think when I played with other people and watched them putt, I'd go, I putt better than they do. Right. And most of the time people would have tell, told you that. If they played with me, they go, yeah, he can putt. Yeah. So, so I was always a good putter. And one of my philosophies was I always felt like I didn't make a bad stroke. I either misread the green or I lined up incorrectly. Yeah. But I always made a perfect putting stroke. Yeah. Uh, because I always rocked my shoulders. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's nothing that can go wrong there. And if you have that belief about yourself, then you never missed a putt because of a physical problem. It was because you misread it or you, you your eyes lined yourself up wrong right. somehow on the green. Yeah. And with undulations and things, that can happen. And you can put the ball a little bit too far up or back in your stance, yeah. maybe a little too far away from it if you're on a... If the ball's above you or below yeah. you, there's things that can happen. But as far as making a stroke and just saying letting it go and being free and freewheeling it, and that's what you have to do when you putt. You have to just let your putting stroke and go. I, I think all in all, people look at, you know, assume they're doing every other variable completely correctly. And then when they miss a putt, they blame the putting stroke all too often. 
So, like you said, undulations, misreading greens, setup is a big one. Right. People just think they they have those variables down pat, and yeah. then uh, and then they it's blame the, their putting stroke. Yeah. But the stroke isn't that bad. So. I've never I've never done that. I try to I try to teach my students not to blame the putting stroke. It's not the putting stroke. Yeah. And I try to get them to line up more correctly. They did studies years ago, and I, I think the, the statistic I remember was that Tiger, when he was putting well and playing, you know, when he was the best in the world, he was setting up and aligning his putter and his feet and the ball uh, 91% of the time correctly or the same. Mm -hmm. And the next best tour player was um, 82%. So he was like 9% <laughs> better than the next best putter on tour. Yeah. So it, it goes to reason that if you can line up the same way every time, ball position. Now his alignment is kind of funny. He was set up, I think the face was two degrees open at, imp at, at address. <laughs> And, uh, and and then he let it release an impact. Yeah. So you know, even though he wasn't, and they call yeah, it, they he, call it zeroing it out. But if you look at the computers, yeah. zeroing it out on path and zeroing it out on face right. just means that you're you're. you're it's you're interesting. He was a little off there. That's, yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so my next point is you you actually mentioned this a little bit um, talking about how you see a lot of good wristy putters. Um, no, I've wait, seen wait, some, wait, I've it, seen a few. You've seen some, and <laughs> which which is true. Yeah. Um, my next point is actually grip pressure, and I think a lot of amateurs hold the club a little too hard. Yeah. You should almost hold it as light as possible. And the reason I say this is a lot of these people that look really wristy, I feel like are just have really soft or holding the club really softly, and they do pivot around their spine like you were talking about. Right. So, so if if you kind of just let the club head travel and let the club head be, I call it being top heavy. So, so if you, if you feel like all the weight's just swinging in the club head, it's going to be a much more nicer roll and more consistent roll. It'll help you with touch, um, yeah. ra rather than the, you know, obviously it'll help repeat a stroke and and hit it straighter too. But it really helps a lot with touch. Right. And. Um, I couldn't agree with you more, and I didn't put that one in my top four or five. Right. And the reason reason being is because a lot of times with amateurs, it's almost like you want them to firm up their grip in order for them to learn how to rock their shoulders, right? Rather than be wristy or something. Yeah. So it's like, then then once you learn to quiet the muscles, then the lighter you get, the better it can. Yeah. Be. It, it, I, it, so I totally agree with it you. It kind of is a, yeah. a catch twenty two where you're yeah. teaching to to be strict on a pivot and then you have to be loose at the same time. Yes. So I guess what I'm talking about is the, the you know, ten to fifteen handicapper that's been playing a while. Right. And uh it, it just seems all too often you see no sort of uh you know wrist hinge and, and you just can sense that they're they're gripping the club so hard. Yeah. And and, and you talk about Stockton and every everybody talking about kind of um you know, if you if you want, have you heard the brush paint? Sure. Uh, terminology, yeah. So paint brush, yeah. Right. If um, you know, to do that correctly, it pretty much just hold the club really soft, and it'll it'll happen like that. Right. So, I think the paint brush almost. Uh, it's kind of like it. You you think of it as being like almost break your wrist this way and break your wrist this way. Right. But I think in reality, and this is where I, I did a video on this where. Um, what I think you want to feel is it's almost like you have such a light grip pressure, the putter moves inside of your grip because right. your skin ha gives a little playability. Yeah. Your, your, your skeleton should be almost like a vice. It's like, it's not tight, but it's like steel. Mm -hmm. And you just tighten it ever so lightly, enough to hold, but your skin is there, and then the leather wrap on the grip or the yeah. rubber, or whatever it is, there's a little playability inside of that, that, right. that grip. Right. And I think that's what swings, and that's what the release is. Not, you know, I, I hear some of these guys, and Stan Utley's gotten this great reputation and about releasing, but I, I couldn't disagree more about letting your forearms open and close. I think that's something I would not teach any of my students okay. to do. Um, and in fact, there's new research that says that the top tour players um, actually um, uh, supinate on, on the backstroke. Yeah. Right. They supinate the left forearm, with, which indicates that they're trying to keep the club face more square or close the club face and not let it open 
yeah. during the backstroke. Now, that doesn't mean that they're keeping it closed or keeping it square, but there there's some sort of effort not to let it open as much. Yeah. Okay. It, so so that's something that's that's uh, new in the in the studies. It, it's like of, that when you have a light grip pressure, the stuff that uh, actually happens just happens naturally. So right. you shouldn't have to try to manipulate <coughs> the club face to release correctly or anything. You should just be able to to do it uh, with a light grip pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's true. And you you, know, you got to get your hands and your shoulders set up in the right position. There's a lot of things that have to be. But basically, it's, it's like you said. It's like setting yourself up in the same spot every time and getting the same thing to happen every time. Right. Um, you can have a loop loop in your putting stroke if if you yeah. do every, everything the same every time and start it on the same line that you want. Sure. Right. So. Sure. People have done. Who's next? Me? You or me? I think that was just me. Yeah. So um, my next one is. Uh, Hitting rather than stroking, and I think there's a lot of people. They take the putter back and they they try to hit it, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> I, I kind of like the feeling of of a swing or a stroke. And it's it's not a it's not a, you know people try to punch at it. I think they take it back and they punch at it, especially amateurs. Or if you watch most tour pros now, I, like I said, there's some wristy guys. I play with a guy in, in our section here, Craig Stevens, one of the best uh, uh, Georgia section players in the history of the game, probably. Very wristy kind of a pop putting stroke, one of the best putters you'll ever see. Right. And he was streaky. He was never bad. Yeah. But he was really good sometimes mm -hmm. with, with his with his wristy stroke. Uh, I wouldn't teach that, but he was a very talented guy. And, yeah. you know, you just can't explain how some people can do things. Yeah, Todd I, Hamilton did things yeah, some really yeah, I'm sure strange. I'm sure he did a million things right. And, yeah. Yeah. And then he made he made thing. putts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's that's right. <laughs> but um go, going along with that hitting versus stroking, I will say something and I don't know if I told you this before, but I went down to the golf show and I, I go to these seminars every year. And there's some new research and you might not have heard this yet because you were talking about um earlier about accelerating through the ball right. and some of the some of the top putters they're now s determining that the putter actually decelerates through impact mm -hmm. okay and and when i heard that you know of course we've we've been brought up to believe that all great putters take it back and then they accelerate through impact tiger right. woods would have told you that everybody right. everybody who played the game would have, would have said yeah i accelerate through the ball mm -hmm. all right but i think once i heard that some of the top putters actually let the putter decelerate it started making sense to me because what happens is you take the putter back and you're trying to accelerate it to a point of how fast you want it to go right. to roll the ball the right distance so if you have this predetermined in your mind how fast you need it to go then the release in your putting stroke is accelerating to the to the speed where you have it to the right speed and then just letting it swing through the ball, yeah. at which case it starts to decelerate. Right. And and I think that's interesting. So, you know, if you start thinking about that, then then uh you know, letting your putting stroke just have this almost rhythm to it yeah. and not trying to hit it, mm -hmm. right? Trying to make a stroke that is the right length and the right speed for yeah. the putt. And I think that's a that's something that a lot of amateurs don't know how to do. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, talking about that, you know, the best putters are actually decelerating. Right. I, I think that's one of those things where technically it is, it, but we don't, we don't think of it that way, you know. Yeah. So, so we think of it accelerating through. And, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to the next person I teach and say, hey, decelerate through this one. <laughs> yeah. um, no, exactly. I, I would tell them, yeah. you know, stroke it don't hit it yeah but uh well, yeah that, that, that's really interesting um it, it is and it is. and i feel like you know if you were to study the acceleration on a graph that's imagine i imagine that's how they do it it'd be really interesting to look at how your take back or your your back swing speed kind of correlates with what you do i feel like a faster swing a faster backstroke would be uh would cause you to decelerate more. You know, obviously when you hit the ball, I'm sure the graph just drops completely down because when you actually make contact, well, yeah, then it does decelerate, yeah. Right. But, well, I think what's happening is just what I said. It's like you, you accelerate up to a certain point and you haven't reached impact yet and then you let the putter just go. Yeah. So it's almost like you're letting momentum go at that point. Right. And then and then it, it starts slowing down. Yeah. So 
Um, it, it is. It's kind of interesting stuff. And just like you said, it's like words mean things. When you're talking to amateurs or you're talking to students, in, right. in our case, you, you have to watch what you say. Now, I was down at a, a teaching forum um, down in Orlando, and I, I, don't, I don't like to argue with people. Or, but there, there was a guy who was talking about putting, and he was adamant about it's not a pendulum. The uh, a putting stroke is not a pendulum motion, and so he's he's uh, he's making his point, and he was adamant about it was like cannot call it a pendulum, but you and I both know, and if 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 I'm talking to a student, I say hey, I want you to feel like a pendulum, right, like, like a clock, t- yeah. talking back and forth. Oldest one. Well, if that gets them to make a nice putting stroke, then right. that's the word I want to use. Yeah. I don't care whether the, you know, and, and when I'm teaching people, um, I listen for what they say. Right. And sometimes the words they pick out are not what I would pick out. Yeah. But it's what they say. And I go, hey, I want you to do that. Yeah. So, so th- th- that's a good thing to know. And, and I might, if, if I can sense that the student is really, you know, kind of thinking that it's not a pendulum and, and knows how a pendulum exactly works. Then, yeah. then, then I, I'll explain it to him that it's yeah. not or him or her that that might it might not be a yeah. you know technically the the right terminology. But the the take home point is to try to communicate the best possible way. And yeah. you and I both know, you know, you throw you throw different terms at the wall and see what sticks. That's right. Yeah, um, that's right. So, like rhythm is important in putting, and obviously, right. you know, we're finding out. You know, we're, we use the blast. Um, um, motion detector here, yeah, and then you know there's some great information coming out. Almost too much information. Yeah, you know we're we're finding so much information out about the putting stroke, and I mean, um, I think it'll be five more years before we can disseminate yeah. what all this means, <laughs> um, because everybody's got their own little imprint uh, mm-hmm. on a putting stroke. So, yeah. So what are we on number four now? Yeah, I yeah. think you're up so, to yours. Yeah. So I got um, yeah. My last one has to do with setup. Um, so. Basically, what I see in a lot of people is has to do with their eye line over the ball. Oh, so yeah, what what we want to see is eyes directly over the ball. Reason being, it is it makes it a lot easier to see the hole. It's kind of funny how being a little behind the ball or a little in front of the ball could kind of change completely how you look at the hole and how 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 you could kind of read the green from there. Yeah. Um, we see that when we when we try to line up the ball. Uh, so if if you get behind the hole and, and squat down and actually line up the line on the ball, and then you stand up and you see you feel like from standing up you see the lines pointing in a completely different direction. Yeah. You kind of see how angles could kind of play like that. So having your eyes over the ball is extremely important. And what I see with a lot of people is they'll try to get into this athletic posture. And, and kind of just a strong athletic posture that we've been taught in every sport what we should do. And what that kind of leads to is the eyes behind the ball, um, which, which is interesting. It's like the one thing in sport where we want to be slumped over, have our back in flexion, and, ha- and that's kind of what brings your, your eyes over the ball. Right. Yeah, obviously we see the best putters in the world. If you really looked at their setup, it it doesn't look very athletic, right? Uh, yeah. Right. So, I think that's a, a important point. Right. All right. So last thing I had here uh, was open face, but you know that's you know that's along with alignment, open mm-hmm. shoulders causes open face so you know what you see generally with putting is just just like a full swing if you see someone who's slicing right a lot of times their feet are lined up to the right and they're coming over it with their right. shoulders right. so it's like they, they they line up right and then they pull left because they yeah. see the target over to the left so then when they get on the putting green you kind of see the same thing it's like they line their feet up they see the target to the left, mm-hmm. and then they pull across it, or they swing outside in, their shoulders are open, face is open. So yeah. if you looked at someone who's lining up right, if they put the face down, it's probably going to be lined up right as well. Yeah, I, I guess it's fair to say we could pull all the all these setup issues together and say, hey, fix your setup. That's, that's, that's yeah. the take-home point. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, it is kind of interesting when you see people that struggle with the the outside end path on you know on the full swing that we see all the time. Yes, they kind of have a similar putting stroke and a, a similar putting motion where where everything's open. Uh, there's other contributing factors, things like the the uh, right eye dominant. Um, I think that's a big one. But uh, yeah, and you know it's, when you ha- have your shoulders open, your face has to be open, have right. to go outside in. So that's a whole thing. And, and one thing I wanted to ask you, are there any markers or any sort of um, things you look out for to say, hey, you know, I'm doing this one thing, so my putting stroke's on right now? Or, or like is, if you're missing the, the hole a certain way or watching the ball roll a certain way, any, any markers that really? Um, I, I can remember when I'm putting really well, it's like I feel like like you were talking earlier that my grip pressure is like nothing. Yeah. I feel like my putting stroke is my it's just all shoulders or not shoulders like I said back yeah. muscles. Right. And it's just like butter. Yeah. And 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 then the other thing I notice when I'm really putting well, it's like I hit the ball so solid. Right. It's like my stroke feels like it's nothing and then the ball comes off the middle face like it's jumping, like mm-hmm. it's like it just jumps into the hole. Right. So it's almost like I have higher speed, more accuracy and you're just getting in a zone. And it kind of, it kind of ties in you yeah. just, you know, you talk about it jumping into the hole. It probably seems like you're hitting. You start hitting putts a little bit more firm. You're more aggressive with putts. You make well, more. Putts. Again, it's just like an. It's just like a putt. It's like your, your full swing. The more efficient you are, the further you hit it. Right. Yeah, you look at some like, uh, you know, Oosthuizen, yeah. uh, um, Louis Oosthuizen, and he, he's got this very efficient swing, and he's very powerful for a small guy. Well, that's right. the way my putting stroke feels. It's like I have this really efficient putting stroke and sometimes it just comes off better. Yep. So it's like I stroke it easier and it rolls better mm-hmm. and it, and it's more pure and it just goes yep. right in the center of the hole. So yep. along that point, I, I like to look at other, um, you know, I, I know you don't like the line on the ball. I, I mark the line on the ball, not to aim, but specifically just see if my ball's rolling end over end. And I think of it like a basketball shot for the, for those of you that played basketball would know that, when, when you shoot it correctly, the ball spins a certain way. It spins end over end. Right. And I think of it just like that, where if I'm rolling the ball good, that line is a straight line. It's not wobbling at all. Yeah. You know, there's hardly any skipping. It's just a, a good roll. And and that's that's one marker I look for. Um, and, and the other thing is I, I feel like the ball almost breaks less when, when, I'm, uh, when I'm rolling the ball well. And I think that ties into, you know, that whole string of factors that we were talking about. Where yeah, you're taking the break out, maybe. Yeah, I'm taking the so break because uh, yeah. I'm I'm aggressive. I don't I don't care. Meanwhile, when I'm putting bad, I'm just the most tentative person in the world. You know, got to play more break. Right. Use right. the whole hole. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, going back to what you said um, about uh, markers and things, you know, when I'm uh, <clears throat> when I'm really putting well, um, it, it's almost like, and the, you know, I, people ask me all the time in full swing as well as putting, you know, where do you look? Do you look at a dimple on the ball? Mm-hmm. Do you look at the back of the ball? Yeah. You know, like Jordan Spieth looks at the hole. Right. Some people look at a line. And, you know, I, I look at the golf ball when I'm hitting it in a full swing and even when I'm putting, I look at it kind of like I do the road. And mm-hmm. I've done I've done videos on this. It's kind of like when you look at the road, you know you're not supposed to stare at the lines on the road. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to stare at the road. You're supposed to look out there and see the big picture. And the reason why you're supposed to see the big picture is because there's things going on. Yeah. Right? You've got people that could be walking across the road. There could be a child chasing a ball. There could be a dog running. Mm-hmm. You know, there's traffic signals. There's all yeah. these things that you have to look for. And I, I really and, like that analogy for putting because yeah. that kind of ties into trusting your stroke. So it... Obviously, we all trust that we can drive within the lines by not looking right. at the lines. Well, I think what happens is when you, again, when you're when you're driving, you see the big picture. Yeah. So when you're putting or hitting a golf ball, driving a golf ball, see the big picture. Because when you look down, you don't want to just see the golf ball. You want to feel the target. It's almost like you see the right. target. You want to 
see your feet alignment. You want to see your shoulders. You know, use the peripheral vision, whatever it is. So it's like you see all this stuff and you're taking in all this information, but you're not focusing on just yeah. a dimple or the back of the ball or something right. like that. Right. So again, when I putt, it's like, you know, you got to become really target oriented. And, you know, if you're seeing the line, like you were talking about mm -hmm. or, or whatever, that's one thing. But I, I always have this feeling like it, you're all, it, it's, it's like you're, you know, the no, 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 no thing. You know, yeah. you, just, you just line up to the spot and you hit it to the spot and it right. just breaks in the hole. So right. you have this whole total picture. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, we were talking about uh, aim point earlier. Right, right. And, and that's always, that's the reason I felt like aim point works, not necessarily because of the, I think it helps. It's a method to read greens, but not necessarily, you still have to be accurate with your fingers, holding your fingers up like that. And it's kind of difficult to do. But I feel like aim point forces you to pick a specific spot on the hole, and then you could just trust everything from there. You right. Know, if if if, and the reason I feel like that helps is if you don't have that specific spot, a lot of times you could just almost feel misguided, and that leads to ten tentative putts. So in a way, I'm what I'm saying is relatively different than what you were saying the, you know the whole yeah. no 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 <laughs> yeah you know we all think of caddyshack but it's almost the same so it it forces if if you're so specific with a line or a spot it you know then you you could just trust it and that's yeah. why i felt like brooks kepka did really well with the us open um you know coming down the stretch there right on, on it, on Sunday, he putted amazing. Yeah, that was sure the did. best yeah. part of his round. He made everything inside 10 feet. Yeah. All right, so uh, one of the last things, I had physical things on here first, but I, yeah. I wrote down one mental thing, which is reading greens. Yeah. And obviously, most beginners and amateurs, they're not really good at, especially in the beginner mm -hmm. stage, you're not very good at reading greens. And reading greens is all experience. You know, you've got to be able to see undulations and, right. and see grain and, and dark color and light color and, yeah. and recognize uphill, downhill. It's just there, knowing what the ball's going to do. There's so much yeah. experience there, and, yeah. and um, I think that's a that's a big problem with with amateurs is they don't know how to read right. greens very right. well and, and and adjust their speed and play bigger breaks and smaller breaks, you know things yeah. like that yeah so I, I definitely have to agree with you there and that all comes with the practice i don't i don't think there's anything you could do other than actually playing golf to to really practice reading greens yeah and you know there's a lot of people who they they, they play one golf course uh -huh. Right. Or yeah. they, they play in one state. Right. You know, so if you looked at, you know, I feel like to be really good, you've got to, you know, play in different states, oh, and yeah. different types yeah. of grass and different golf courses and hey, it's you know, a game in game the game. mountains and the, on the ocean. There's all kinds of differences. Yeah. So, you know, while I was at Mississippi State, you get kids from north that only played bent grass growing up and they right. they stayed complaining about bermuda all four years sure you know? so, <laughs> I, can, I can remember i can remember coming down right. from illinois and playing on the bermuda grass down in in florida and you know uh, back when i was playing they didn't have much bent grass now nowadays you have bent grass in florida they, right. they maintain it and they have uh, now they've got blends yeah, and now they're starting Hy to get, hybrids get away from that because it's so hard to maintain. Yeah, the smaller, smaller, healthier blades of grass are, that are similar to bent grass, but but stay alive in those yeah. southern climates. So uh, um, we're, we're going to have um, we're talking about reading greens. Um, Scott Poole is a golf course architect friend of mine who lives locally, and I'm going to have him on the show show pretty soon. And and Scott actually, and and he's the one who kind of invented this whole green reading idea. He and a guy named uh, Mark Sweeney. Mm -hmm. um, Scott was a golf course architect with a camera, and he used to shoot all these undulations on the greens, and he had all these data points because it would, it would scan these greens and show you how where the, the undulations, high points and low points, the topography of, yeah. the, of the green. And he asked Mark Sweeney, a friend of his, he goes, hey, is there some way we can figure out how putts break by looking at all this yeah. data? Pretty and they, they started coming up with that. Yeah. They actually won an Emmy. Uh, television <laughs> Emmy for best new sports um, um, idea or whatever. <laughs> on, on the, and, yeah. and so we're going to have him on, but you know, that leads us to the aim point idea and right. the science of yeah. reading greens rather than yeah. experience, right? You can, yeah. you can learn to do and, it. And we've talked about it before. To a lot of people, it's a math equation. Yeah. And I, 
I don't see much success in that. Like, it, it really has to click with you for that to work. Right. But, um... You think it's validation for some of these guys? It's like they right. they, they want to know for sure. Like, Justin yeah. Rose was... Yeah. He, he's been pretty successful. In fact, I, I know that he and um, um, Scott Poole had a, a relationship, yeah. you know? Well, whatever, whatever you can do to trust the line is what I what I feel like right. works. Um, so you get your caddy, he yeah. reads it, you read it, and right. then you both do aim point. You all and open, you, the, you got four open the page 50 in your little <laughs> book, and then... Yeah. And you got four out of four saying it's going to break two inches outside the whole left, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and then you miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, think, uh, I think the validation is a huge part of it. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you have the resources to do it, do it. Yeah. Um, you know, I I've dabbled in aim point before. I I really enjoyed it. I didn't, I so I think there's like there's a couple methods. I did the the ver the finger one, um, where it, you didn't use any of the books or anything, but you kind of yeah. graded your what slope was on each finger, and and I found that it helped specifically for it made you be very precise in your targets. Yeah. And that's why I feel like it helped. So now I don't use it, but I take away from it that that I need to be very precise and just trust it right. and just hit the ball. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's helped my putting mentally and just incredibly uh, over the past couple of years, just yeah. understanding that. Well, I think we're running uh, close to time here, yeah. and I wanted to take an opportunity and plug two of my putting videos. I don't do, oh, go ahead. I haven't done a lot of short game videos, but I probably uh, will in the future. But yeah. I've got two two putting videos that I really like. One of them is called Peripheral Putting, and uh, so you can go to my YouTube channel and uh, I've got a golf tips channel. Um, we'll put a card up here so you can go uh, <laughs> uh, subscribe to that channel, and then the other one. Is uh, it's called the Dempsey drill, and it's it's a drill where uh, you put a put a ball out there in a ring, and then you try to t knock it out of the I, ring. But yeah, I really like that drill. It's, it's a good drill for, you know, and, and I'll give you a, a preempt what it's about. It's um, a lot of putters when you've watched them, even the guys on tour, they pull up, they'll stand there with their feet planted in one spot, and they'll pull a ball in and put it, and then they pull another ball in and put it and they pull another ball in and putt it. They never change their feet, right. and they put the ball in the same spot every time. So they're practicing making a perfect stroke. But I think what needs to be practiced more than making a perfect stroke, like I said, making a perfect stroke is really kind of the easy part. Yeah. If you learn to rock your shoulders correctly, I think the hard part is changing and aligning your feet, putting the ball in the right position. So the Dempsey drill teaches you to aim over here and putt a ball, and then realign your feet over here and putt a ball, and then aim over here and putt a ball, and it's it's a it's kind of a target game that yeah. teaches you how to set your feet and and get everything to where you can pull the trigger. It, it's one of the few putting drills that's actually pretty fun too. I, yeah, I have, I have a good time doing it. So anyway, check yeah. those out. Hey. And um, I'm hey, Don Peterson. Well, well, while we're at it, might oh. as well plug our other stuff. So, yeah, go ahead. So if you want to check out more of us, so you can go to swingfactory.com and and see some of our inf information about. The studio here and our lesson packages and whatnot. Um, I have a blog up and running now. I, I just uploaded my second blog today. And I'll be making sure I do at least one or two of those a week. Uh, that is swingfactoryjustin.com. Um, right. Obviously, Don's YouTube channel. Right. And, you know, we're hoping to continue growing this thing. So. Very good. Let's do it. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm Don Peterson. Justin Masenko. We'll see you next time.